for tuning in. On this episode of Dan's Garage, Dan's going to be installing a toolbox, a battery, and a winch to the trailer. Hey Dan, run that intro! In this big open spot here, I got a special treat for it. So here's the mock-up of the box. I have the front beam support here, and I have decided that I'm gonna weld it to the frame of the trailer, but I'm gonna bolt the box to it, just in case we ever need to remove the box. It just kinda of makes sense. But there's no reason that these shouldn't be welded to the frame, so I'm gonna weld them to the frame. I have the front one here. There's gonna be another one in the back. I'm debating whether I wanna bolt the box to the frame of the trailer, but I don't think I need to, so I think we'll just do uh, four holes here, and then I can use those holes to support these to paint them, and then we'll bring them back. We'll get them in position to weld them on, and then we'll go ahead and mount the box, and then we'll get to the winch. Alright, so this is pretty much where it's going to live. I got the uh, front bar bolted through the holes to the toolbox. I got the back bar, the same thing, bolted to the toolbox through the holes. I'm going to take it all apart so I can paint these cross beams, and then once they're painted, I'll put this all back together the way it is, and then I'll go ahead and weld these underneath, and then that should be it for the mounting. I don't think you want to watch that, do you? Maybe I'll just do one of those, watch this, and they'll be painted. If that doesn't work out, I'll paint them and then I'll come back. See? So here's a final view underneath the toolbox. I welded on the cross beams and the toolbox is bolted on. So if I ever need to remove it for access or whatever, I can. Okay, forgetting the winch on the trailer. Wait, why am I forgetting the winch? No, I don't want to forget the winch. In order to get the winch on the trailer, that's what I want. Um, I'm going to mount it here. There's not enough room in the box. I just have enough room in there for the battery, the straps and chain. So I'm actually going to mount the winch out here. There's a cross beam right under the front of where the winch is going to be. And this diamond plate goes under this uh, angle iron, so it's kind of protected from peeling up that way. So I think it'll be nice and strong going in there. So I'm going to use a trick that I heard metal shapers do. So check this out. So I need to transfer these four holes to the trailer so I know where to drill. Now, originally when this was new, it may have come with a template, but I bought it used, so I don't have a template. So, old metalworking trick, you take a thin cardboard, like a pizza box, and you cut it out, and it's strong enough to kind of keep its shape better than a piece of paper, but it's also uh, pliable enough that you can cut holes in it, you can work it with scissors and stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut this off. I'm going to put it on here. We'll go ahead and scribe out where the holes are. I'll drill the holes or cut them, and then we'll transfer that onto the trailer. So, hopefully this works. Uh, Spoiler alert, if it didn't work, you wouldn't be seeing this. Or maybe you would, maybe I'm trying to teach a lesson. All right, so I'm gonna cut this top off. So I guess I'm really lucky because if I took this pizza box and fold in the sides, the width is just about center to center on these holes. So all I really need to do is cut these sides off. I know where my sides need to be. And then I'm actually gonna use this piece that's so tall enough. And all I have to do is mark the spread of that, which again, I can measure and double check. So I can actually put this wherever I need to, and all I have to do is mark these lines, and I know the width, so got lucky. If I use those front corners to mark where it's going to go, now this cable is pushing this out a little bit, but if I mark each one of these sides with the center, or if you don't want to do center to center, you put this on the outside edge, and then you mark the outside edge. You do it that way too. And another note, when you're doing precision measurements, don't use a swivel chair. All right, so I have the template here. So this is uh, my front edge of where the front holes are gonna be. Here's my center mark and my center mark on the template. So basically, I just need to make sure that I'm the same distance out from here and there, because my paper could be 
little bit this way or a little bit that way. So kind of need another center mark here uh, to make sure that I'm squared up, All right? Or I just need two more of those marks here and here. So keeping in mind there's a weld here, but I think I went from the front of this and it's seven and three eighths. So if I come out here a little bit, I'm gonna mark seven and three eighths. Here a little bit. What is this one? Too far. Two here. Three Check that measurements. I'm gonna check those measurements. Seven and three eighths. Seven and close to three eighths. We know that's square, right? Well, we hope it is. And we lost our center mark. But now we have a nice piece of tape. We can make a center mark. So make our center mark on here. tape the whole thing. Would that be easier? Sometimes it is. You know the old measure twice, cut once? Yeah, I don't usually do that. I am now, because I don't want to ruin my brand new trailer drilling holes in it. It's always hard enough that you drill holes in a brand new something or other. So you know the spread is 10, right? This should be 10 here to here. All right, so I know this is right here, so let's make sure that tape is stuck down. And we just need to make sure these are square, so I need a uh, square. Then I can go ahead and double check these and make sure that they're square. So we could basically take our center punch, punch these corners, and then we could punch right on the edge there, and then we could drill these four holes. Now keep in mind, this is just going through diamond plate, this is going through the diamond plate and that cross beam, so these can be a little harder. But I'll do that and come back. We'll peel up the tape and see how I did. I drilled the holes. You missed that part. I didn't think you wanted to see it. It's not very exciting. I mean, if you want to watch somebody drill holes in metal, this is not the show. I wouldn't bore you with that stuff. Okay, so here's a little update on the winch. I got it mounted. I did have to unwind it because it was wound uh, a little incorrectly for my taste and it was kind of hitting the bottom. So I wanted to make sure it was uh, going to be mounted correctly. And you can see there's not a lot of room in between the front of the trailer and the winch. I had to mount it there for the uh, cross brace so it would be strong. So I opted to take the controls and the wiring off the top and we're going to put them in the box, which will keep them safer anyway. So since the box is going to be right here, all the wires will just come through a hole here. It'll be protected by this for rain and everything like that. The wires will just go right in here and that's where the battery will be anyway. So that'll keep this nice and clean and allow it to be covered for protection. Okay, so this is turning into more of an update video since uh, I'm just drilling a lot of holes and doing a lot of figuring, not very exciting. So I'm going to put the control box here. I do have to make some mounts for that. So the wires are going to go through the back. I'll show you that in a second. I have room for the battery here and then this side is the um, straps chains and also the uh, winch control if I need to plug it in but the wireless should work just fine. So it seems like we still have a little bit of room left in here so uh, that's fine. I don't really know that I'll have anything else in here but if I do we'll be good. Let me show you what I did on the back. So I got the wires coming through the back of the toolbox. I just drilled a couple holes and made it oval and put a little piece of hose on there to protect the cables. Now we'll go ahead and test fit this one more time to make sure this is all going to work. You can see the final of the winch here with the wires, the inside of the box, and we got the power unit there. And I just had the battery sitting in here so I could uh, spool up the winch. 
And this is the four bolts for the winch. You can see the two towards the back are in that two inch angle. And then the other two are just on the lip, but it's supported by the front, so I think it'll be all right. So here's a final view of everything underneath. I still have to paint the welds, but I gotta wait for them to cool down to do that. So here's the final look of how the box and the winch look on the trailer. Everything will be stashed inside the box. The winch is easily accessible and we're good to go. See? So that's pretty much it for this episode. No, I'm not turning my garage into a man cave. We're just moving some furniture around the house. So this is what we have. But soon there'll be another Project Chevelle in here. So you want to keep an eye out for that. And as far as the trailer goes, I am going to hook up the trailer wiring to the truck so it'll charge that battery. So don't be giving me any comments about I should put solar panels and stuff like that on it. So other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Stay positive and keep on wrenching. And check out these other videos. And subscribe over there. Or over there.